Good evening, everybody. Thank you for inviting me here to your uh, meeting this evening. Uh, a little bit of an introduction. My name is Brian. Uh, call sign is KA3VSP. I'm in the northern part of Delaware. Um, been a ham since uh, well, I passed my novice test in uh, November of 1989 and uh, uh, technician test in December 1989, but my license didn't come until March, uh, the end of March of 1990. So there was a little bit of a wait there. Um, I'm part of a uh, group here in uh, Northern Delaware that is uh, trying to revive and rebuild the uh, packet uh, AX25 pack, packet net network within uh, the state of Delaware. And uh, I've been talking about this for a couple of years now. And the more I talk about it, um, I seem to be going in the wrong direction as we're branching out to other states and north and every place else. And uh, we've had some growth. We've Well, we've had a lot of growth in Delaware, but um, we're getting a lot more growth each time we do a presentation at club meetings or ham fest. Uh, even talking about packet radio on uh, repeaters, there's always someone that will pop in there and uh, with stories about how they used to use packet and they still have a hardware TNC down in the basement or in the closet somewhere. Uh, so it's always a good uh, topic, uh, conversation uh, topic. Um, again, I'm part of a group in Delaware called the Delaware Packet Net Network. Um, <clears throat> And uh, what we're trying to uh, build is RF links. Uh, a lot of uh, digital communications relies on commercial services, internet, uh, but we're looking, we're working towards RF uh, connected sites um, to get off commercial uh, services. So this is the website that we run, depn.net. Uh, it's got some good information, good resources, and I'll come back and talk to you, talk a little bit about this uh, website here in a little bit. Um, I'm going to start a PowerPoint presentation. Um, is PowerPoint up? Can you see the PowerPoint now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So. A lot of people have heard, well, most ham, almost everybody's heard about packet radio, but to, uh, some hams, especially the newer hams, they may not really fully understand what we used to use packet as 20, 30 years ago. Um, when uh, a newer ham hears of packet radio, first thing is they think of is WinLink or APRS, and we'll talk about that shortly. So um, a little bit of a history. Those of us have been around for a while. This is going to be uh, uh, old information, but it's um, it's part of the presentation here. Uh, also, a lot of these uh, um, screens are, are have redundant information. As I I I've done a number of packet demonstrations, and basically each time I do one, I take. Uh, screens from different uh powerpoints and uh, throw them together so there's there will probably i well i know there's going to be redundant information here so anyway uh so what is packet am uh amateur radio packet radio um well amateur radio packet radio if you can imagine a time before the internet before the world wide web before uh well actually not before the internet but before the World Wide Web, before most had access to uh, email, uh, there was a radio network of ham radios, uh, ham radio operators uh, creating a network with RF links, um, connecting uh, and sharing bulletins, mail messages, small files sharing, um, among other things, other TCP IP uh, activity um so it was a real big thing uh back it started in the late 1970s uh exploded in the 1980s and uh, into the 1990s and then when the world wide web came into being and cell phones and everything else 
um, packet radius saw uh, a decrease. Uh, hams all over the world were connecting with uh, hardware uh, modems. Now these modems were called terminal node controllers, which did more than packet radio. They uh, most of them did multiple uh, uh, digital um, modes. And uh, what this device did was it connected your computer to and interfaced your radio. Uh, turn your digital signals of your computer into uh, audio to be transmitted over RF. Uh, a lot of packet TNCs had uh, personal mailboxes. Um, okay. Uh, so how do uh, packet, how does packet work? How do the packet data frames get from point A to point B? Well, usually via point C. Um, there's an, an, there are nodes connected uh, in the local and regional areas providing automatic data packet uh, forwarding, allowing hams to connect to distance stations and nodes, automatically creating node lists and routing tables, um, which I'll show you that briefly here in a couple graphics. Uh, mess messages, BBS messages are used are automatically routed using hierarchy routing, which includes specific regional information, uh, which we'll also talk about shortly. Uh, oh, the on the network nodes, they're usually connected to an RF backbone, separate from the end users. Uh, with the uh, they they would connect to a node, and then the nodes would talk to each other on an RF backbone to keep that traffic separate. And here's a typical uh, packet radio network, okay? Um, you have two stations connecting through a node, uh, Digipeter or a BBS. And this uh, packet stations connect to node and BBS on a simple, uh, single simplex frequency. And the network nodes are again are usually connected on an RF backbone or on a separate frequency. Uh, the nodes and BBSs were usually located high top mountains, uh, mountaintops, hilltops, towers, high buildings. Uh, so just like a, a repeater to extend the range of the end users. Uh, Local stations uh, are capable of building uh, and enhancing the local net network. Uh, most TNCs were capable of digipeters, having a digipeter enabled or a node enabled, either a NetROM node built in, or they could burn a firmware <laughs> chip for that. Um, or uh, Cantronics TNCs would have um nodes a uh, uh, k node or k net node and we'll talk about those shortly uh there's also sound card modems now uh a lot of uh technology has come out uh and we'll show that shortly uh sound card modems and most hams will already have one of these so this will allow you to get into packet radio or try packet radio with probably zero expense if you have a signal link. Uh, and I'll show you other options for um, uh, building kits for interfaces to your radio. Uh, how a digipeter works, uh, basically you have two stations and this, uh, Diagram uh, station A and station C want to talk to each other. Uh, however, they can't communicate directly. So what they do is they go through station B, um, either through digipeting or through as a node, uh, depending on how station B is set up. Uh, the the um, uh, digipeting is fine 
the issue is is that when you use a digipeter uh the packets have to be acknowledged all the way through the network from station a to c station c say station a transmits uh, a packet uh, designated for uh station c uh station b will retransmit that station c will uh receive that and then we'll have to acknowledge that packet and then send that acknowledgement all the way back to station A saying that uh, the packet's been received without error. And that's one of the advantages of packet, by the way, is error of uh, forwarding messages with, uh, with error correction. Now, if that packet is lost or station A doesn't get an acknowledgement, it has to retransmit that packet. So that's that's the downfall of uh, digipeters. Uh, how a node works, say station B is running a node, station A would transmit to station B, <laughs> station B would store that uh, packet and then transmit to station C. And the acknowledgement is much shorter because the, the station that originated the the um, the, uh, the transmission only has to have acknowledgement between uh, the node receiving it, and then as that node forwards to station C, uh, it does the same thing. Station C only talks to the node, so that's the advantage of running a node, either a Knet uh, node, which is a NetROM node or a uh, Cantronics node. And there are other nodes available for other TNCs as well. Um, but the Cantronics is the most popular. Uh, automatic Packet Reporting System, APRS. A lot of people got on APRS. APRS uh, was developed by uh, Bob WB4APR, who recently became a silent key. Um, Bob was a great guy. He, um, I think he lived in North Carolina, but he traveled up and down I-95 on the East Coast quite a lot, and he was always active on local repeaters. So as he was coming uh, through a uh, local area here, uh, he was he uh, he was always on the radio. Um, he developed APRS and. Uh, uh, it became very popular for position reporting, uh, for uh, for message forwarding, announcements, um, and how that works is APRS uses packet uh, to transmit, and it's usually on a single frequency, one four four three nine zero, and then local digipeters would extend that local coverage. It will retransmit the uh, the the signal, uh, the tr the original transmission, and then eventually it'll get to an I gate, which is an internet gateway uh, for internet reporting, and you'll see the packet uh, positioning on uh, on different websites. Uh, Winlink. I uh, took this right from Winlink's uh, um, web page uh, because it's it's perfect the way they uh, they represented it there. Uh, Winlink is global radio email system, uh, uses amateur radio as well as some uh, other licensed and government uh, systems. Um, and it's exclus uh, exclusively used by emergency communication uh, communicators. Uh, so Winlink is very popular and uh, uh, the one thing about Winlink users, though, I'm trying to get them to uh, break away from Winlink uh, users will pop up on a frequency, connect to a Winlink server, send their message, and then drop off. So it does nothing to build the, the packet system, the local packet system. Um, every Every node or every digipeter on a local frequency builds the packet system. Uh, and if a one link station comes up, transmits their email, uh, 
and then disappears. It's really not doing much. Uh, when link has different capabilities of uh, sending messages or sending uh, packets either over RF or over IP, uh, Telnet and different other modes. Um, and it's capable of forwarding over RF or over the internet. So you can send uh, you can send email from a local uh, from your packet station over RF and send it to someone with a Gmail uh, address, email address. So that's that's pretty popular. Um, so if packet radio works so well, what happened? Uh, well, again, with the advent of the internet, uh, especially smartphones, uh, packet radio declined as a popular message uh, delivery system. Um, that is until the interest of uh, emergency communications using Winlink NTS uh, APRS demonstrated the need for an RF linked AX25 backbone. Uh, and that backbone disappeared years ago. And that's what we are rebuilding now. It's not just us in Delaware. There are several groups throughout the United States and the world, actually, that are doing this. And uh, there's a group on here this evening, um, EastNet Packet, uh, that have developed quite a system throughout uh, the Northeast United States. And now our system down here in Delaware uh, which is extended to Chester County and Delaware County, Pennsylvania, and a little bit further north now, we're about one hop away from connecting with them. So that's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, so that network is building. Uh, packet radio today, again, this is a redundant thing. When hams today think of packet, one link APRS, um, I've already said all this. <laughs> uh, so why why do we still use packet radio? Uh, or why do, should we still use packet radio? Um, uh, the main uh, advantage that I see anyway is that packet radio provides an error-free message delivery between two stations, uh, either peer-to-peer -peer communications, nodes, or gateways, it's worldwide uh, system and it works. Uh, another uh, thing is that, and I'm gonna be doing a demonstration on this. I tried to put something together for over the summer, but I got tied up with work projects and I'm gonna to try to get that done uh, with the upcoming uh, holiday season, after the holiday season, I should say. but. There's a way to for most hams to get started with little or no cost. Okay, most hams already have uh, everything that they need, and with free sound modem software and terminal programs, um, it's very very easy. And I'm going to demonstrate that here shortly. Uh, packets easy to install, configure, and maintain. Uh, packet stations can be uh, set up as a portable station, perfect for go kits. A lot of go kits have packet, uh, usually Winlink, but uh, it doesn't have to necessarily just be Winlink. Uh, and again, over the recent years, uh, amateur radio groups have been rebuilding the, the RF backbones. Um, there's uh, several groups throughout the United States and many more throughout the world. Uh, rebuilding the RF link back uh, 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 backbone. Here's a uh, map of the uh, uh, worldwide BPQ nodes, they're called. BPQ is a uh, node, NetROM compatible node that offers BBS chat services amongst other services, APRS, OneLink, RMS uh, connections or uh, connectivity. Uh, this is the uh, current uh, view of that map. 
And right now there are uh, about 650 uh, nodes throughout the world. And these are just BPQ nodes. Okay, there's other nodes available um, that aren't BPQ. There's JNOS, there's, um, there's hardware nodes, uh, Net NetROM nodes, uh, hardware TNCs running uh, a node software. Uh, but this is just BPQ nodes. And this is a little bit of a, uh, a zoom in on that. And then finally, uh, I think there's one more after this. And then finally here in Delaware. Uh, when I first started, the uh, nodes up here in Delaware didn't exist. Um, there was a couple of Windlink stations, which are red. Uh, the greens are the BBQ nodes that we've been installing um, and connecting. Uh, the blue and the yellow are hardware TNCs. Some are, uh, these are all 24 hour, seven days a week uh, uh, connections. Some offer digipeters and some do not. Uh, that's the color code. Um, which is on our website as well. So if you've used packet radio in the past, uh, chances are uh, you have one of these probably still in your closet basement. Uh, if you've been to a ham fest, I'm sure you've seen them. Uh, they're still capable of being used today. Um, I have a couple of them here actually still in use. Uh, so if you have one, feel free to get it out. If you don't have one of these, um, I'll show you what you can do. You have one of those. Um, signal links, uh, very popular with, um, uh, with digital modes, especially for HF. Uh, there's cables for many radios. Um, uh, packet radio on HF, uh, you can get on packet radio uh, on HF frequencies, uh, or you can uh, get a cable direct uh, from your uh, signal link to your uh, VHF or UHF radio and uh, use that signal link uh, with a sound modem software. Um, the sound modem software is in the link down below, uh, UZ7HO. Uh, is the call sign, and uh, I have links later on in uh, the presentation and on our website um, where you can get this information. And I'm going to show you how to connect this right now. So if you have a signal link, download some free software connected to your radio, a little bit of a configuration, which we'll go over, and uh, uh, you can use it for local or HF packet, as well as one link. Uh, the, uh, did, uh, this is a DRA interface, a digital radio uh, adapter uh, that you can buy and build as a kit. Um, and I have links to this as well. Um, this is one of them here. can't see okay but these are very very inexpensive uh and i'll show you uh this website here um they have uh a couple different versions of this and i'll show you exactly uh what each one does or which one you should focus on anyway uh these sound cards you can buy for like three dollars off of Amazon, three to five dollars, and you can modify them. It's a USB mm -hmm. sound card. You modify it. Uh, there's instructions on on the internet, and cable plugs up to your radio. Download sound modem software, and you're you're on for less than ten dollars. Um, one exciting thing 
that we're doing now is using different modes of transmitting or methods of transmitting. Uh, AX25 uses usually uses slow speed um, FSK data transmissions, a 300 baud for HF, 1200 to 9600 baud for VHF. Uh, pretty slow stuff. You're not going to be doing much other than messages or uh, people have transferred small files, but uh, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty slow. So uh, modulation techniques have, and protocols have been developed to increase throughput used in digital modes, including AX25 packet today. These are just some of them. Uh, RDOP, uh, VARA, which is very exciting right now. Uh, I put new packet radio on there because there is groups out there uh, uh, experimenting with that. And LoRa, long range, um, it's called LoRa, um, especially with, uh, with APRS in Europe, uh, LoRa is real big. And it's just starting in the United States now or in North America, I should say. Uh, there are other modes and techniques uh, for uh, faster uh, transmissions. Uh, we're focusing on AX25, the FSK still 1200 to 9600 baud, as well as 300 baud. Um, but we're also looking, we're also doing a lot with VARA. Um, uh, Glenn N3MEL from Chester County, he's uh, connecting several sites uh, with HF Vera on 80 meters uh, very successfully. And uh, it's very, very fast. Uh, where we're talking 300 uh, baud rate to 1200 baud rate for HF and VHF packet, uh, he's getting 8,000 8, to 12,000 uh, baud rate. Uh, with Vara, so that's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, setting up, uh, this is one of the uh, slides I, I promote uh, and try to build, have people uh, install and maintain a, a node at their location uh, to build the community net network of nodes. Um, we can show you how to set up a NetROM node um, using uh, BPQ uh, software. Uh, BPQ is uh, available for Windows, Linux, and Raspberry Pi platforms. That photo there is a uh, node I built for Rising Sun Merlin, and that is a, a BPQ node running BBS and Worldwide Chat, and it's got two KISS TNCs that are built from uh, kits. Um, Right there, everything total is probably less than $100. And then you connect those to your radios. Each TNC will connect to a separate radio, uh, usually VHF for local connections, and then uh, the UHF for the backbone. And then you can add additional TNCs for additional ports. And I'll show you the uh, Tarpon TNC. Tarpon is another interesting uh, uh, group. They uh, took the BBQ uh, software and uh, re-engineered re it for their own specific needs um, to specifically be RF linked uh, <laughs> nodes and, and uh, stations. And I'll show you their website here shortly, but they're doing a lot of pretty interesting stuff. And this is just another packet, uh, another screen showing what we do or what we're, we're what our objective is. Uh, we're promoting and documenting the development of the community. I call it the community-based RF-linked amateur radio AX25 um, uh, systems within the state and surrounding areas. And I've been helping people get on packet radio, uh, setting up and, and repairing uh, TNCs. A lot of these TNCs have been sitting for 20, 30 years. Did, some do need some repair. Um, so I've been doing that for people. 
uh, working with Winlink gateways, setting up Digipeters and NetRob nodes. Uh, that's what I've been focusing on. This is a uh, link of uh, uh, resources or, yeah, this is a uh, resource page from our website. Uh, it shows basically everything I'm talking about tonight, uh, different, uh, different sources that are available on the DEPN website, depn.net website. And that's our website. Uh, we do have a mailing list and we also host a monthly Zoom meeting, usually the second Saturday of every month at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, we announce that on packet as well as on our mailing list. And if you go to depn.net slash meet, M-E-E-T, you'll see the invites, uh, the upcoming invites. Now, like I said, we usually have it the second Saturday of every month, but I got tied up with, uh, with while well, I was away last weekend. And uh, so we rescheduled it for this coming Saturday, the 19th. So everybody's welcome to join that. If you'd like to uh, go to depn.net slash meet and uh, get the link for the Zoom meeting. And that's this Saturday, the 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So that's the presentation. Um, and what I usually do now is I talk about the websites. Um, so a lot, every, almost everybody's familiar with signal links. Uh, this is that DRA uh, interface that you can buy. Uh, and build very, very quickly. Probably it took me like a half hour. Um, they do have different kits available. This is the DRA30, and this is the one I recommend, and I'll explain why. Um, this other page here shows all the kits, <laughs> the DRAs that they offer in kit form, and they all do something a little bit different. Okay. Um, the DRA45, this one here, has these op amps for amplification, okay? Now, I bought the DRA30 and the, DAR, the DRA45, and I built both of them, and the DRA30 works a lot better, okay? The DRA45 works, but it's very touchy because of these the amplification of these op amps. You don't need it with most radios today. I'm guessing this is for older radios, maybe in the 70s and 80s, maybe. I don't know. but um, And it's a, a lot more expensive. It's, well, $15 more expensive, I believe. So if you ever go to here and get it to look at for the DRA, I'd recommend a DRA 30. And you notice it does not have the op amps here. It does have the pots to uh, adjust the volume. Um, and this works a lot better. I use this with several radios uh, for demonstrations, everything from a Baofeng uh, HT to uh, Yezu. I used a Yezu 2980 and a Kenwood TM uh, uh, 241. And this, the DRA 30 works a lot better, I found. Uh, Tarpon, let's, uh, let's talk about Tarpon. Um, let's go to their website first. Tarpon is a group in North Carolina that, have, like I said, have uh, taken the BPQ software and uh, uh, re-engineered it, I, I would say, uh, for their own special needs. They have a nice, uh, what they call Tarpon Home uh, for the browser. And um, uh, their website's a little bit difficult to navigate. Uh, but they are, there's a map somewhere. It's better than this map. 
this map's kind of hard to see, but it shows their their entire network, which is pretty impressive. So you might want to look at them as well, but they uh, have developed along with uh, uh, Nino, um, uh, what's his call sign? Um, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, his name is Nino, uh, KK4HEJ. Uh, have developed this KISS TNC that you can build from a kit. It's available on Etsy for $11.99 for the board and the microcontroller. And then on their website, you go and download the build of, uh, the, uh, build of materials uh, from DigiKey. It, and it totals about $28 plus shipping. Um, so for about $40 to $50, uh, you can have a KISS TNC. I use these extensively in my nodes. Uh, and there's also 3D printed cases for these things. Uh, very easy to build and they, they work great. Um, so if you're looking to build a node with BBQ or, or Tarpon, this is probably the TNC you want to you want to use. And they got some nice uh, on Etsy, they got some nice 3D printed cases too. Uh, we talked about sound modem software. Now there's a couple different um, there's a couple different ways you can go. Direwolf is very popular. Uh, Direwolf for Linux. Um, Windows, uh, I'm guessing Apple as well. I'm not an Apple guy, so I, I can't really speak for that. I don't have any experience with it, but I've used Direwolf with uh, Linux and um, it's, it worked out well. But what uh, I tell people to start, especially if you have a signal link, either a signal link that has a cable for your HF rig or you get one for your VHF radio, um, I recommend UZ7HO, and I'm going to show you why. You come here to his website, and again, this link here is on my on the DEPN resources, the DEPN.net website resources, and it's got a couple. It's got files for you to download. There's three files that that you need. You need the sound modem software. You need this, I'm sorry, the sound modem software, uh, the easy terminal software, and then you may need the PTT uh, DLL software. Now, if you use a signal link, you don't need the PTT because signal link has circuitry built in to uh, emulate the push to talk circuit uh, using box. If it sees a signal, the signal link will uh, it will will basically send a, a push to talk. So there's three files you need to download to start this, and they're right here. Those those three files I would recommend. Again, PTT uh, DLL .zip. You may or may not need that. You don't need it for signal link, but you will need it for the, if you use a DRA uh, interface. Basically, you just unzip these. You come into the sound modem. You start the sound modem application. And then you come to easy term and start the terminal application. And that's it. Okay. This is the sound modem application here that you start. There's a couple settings under devices. You select the device that you're using. Um, mine's a USB uh, because I'm using a DRA, re, uh, a DRA uh, interface here. But if it's a signal link, it'll show up as a USB audio interface. Um, the PTT. Like I said before, the DRA that I'm using for this demonstration requires PTT. So you just enable that down here. 
and that's external come here you set that up make sure that your sound card is selected test it'll do a test it'll transmit and then that that'll be it for that uh most of the other settings are all the same you don't touch anything um and and it just works then you bring up your uh terminal program and that's that's it uh you can connect to stations i'm going to connect to ncde which is newcastle delaware it's transmitting it just connected newcastle delaware is sending this information So that's that. Uh, one good thing about UZ7HO, it's pretty full featured. Uh, it doesn't have a node, but it has Digipeter. Uh, you have to actually modify a file for that. I'm not going to go into that because it's a little bit involved, but you can enable Digipeter as well as some other features. And it's a very it's 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 very well documented though on uh, UZ7HO's website. Uh, you also have a personal mailbox. Okay, so I sent myself a, a test message earlier this evening. You click it and there's your mailbox. Your message. You can reply, uh, um, delete, uh, forward to another user on packet. Uh, so it's a full feature mailbox. Uh, one thing about the uh, sound modem software and terminal programs like this, uh, you need to dedicate a computer to be online uh, to have this work, uh, as opposed to a hardware TNC, which you just plug in and connect to your radio. Um, so but a lot of people are using UZ7HO. This is this will only work for Windows computers, though. That's very important. Uh, I'm going to disconnect here. And I'm going to go bring up my uh, node here. Uh, on the left is... Um, my they're both my node but there's they're doing different things the one on the left the top part is showing all of my ports uh some are axip which is uh ax25 over over ip over the internet uh and as well as my rf links um this uh system on the right is showing only my rf links uh, as well as I'm connected to the worldwide chat. And this was chat from this evening. You'll see down here the people connected, um, how long they've been connected or idle, I should say. Um, chat Keep Alive keeps me logged in if I'm not typing anything. And then you see uh, some conversations here. So this can get uh, this gets a lot of uh, activity, and it's you uh, you get to talk to people from all over. So that's that's pretty. Uh, a lot of people like the chat feature. Over here, um, connected to BBS. Uh, I'll just list a couple of messages here. Uh, those of you who, who may be uh, familiar with the packet bulletin boards from the 80s and 90s, they're still here. Um, 
they're not as active as they used to be. Uh, but imagine being on a forum like QRZ.com uh, back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, that's exactly what it was like. So the bulletin board, worldwide chat, and then you got the node. Uh, the node is running, a, it's a NetROM compatible node, which is um, a, a, a network node and it connects to other, it connects to other nodes using broadcast, uh, which you see up here, matter of fact, all this is, is a NetROM broadcast of nodes and any other NetROM node that hears this will add those routes and it automatically figures all that out. All the routing is all automatically done. Um, so the end user connecting to a node, they don't need to know the routing to, to uh, uh, connect to a distant station. And half the fun of packet is, is called node hopping. You connect, you bring up a node list. This is my node list here of available nodes that are that I hear. And um, uh, let's see, these are, most of these are over the internet. So that's no fun. And info. Okay. So he has a short node list as well. So some of these nodes, um, I'm sorry, I don't see what I'm looking for. There was a node that connects to Australia. Um, I don't see that anymore. Uh, you can also play games. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, if you play text-based games from the 80s uh, on 8-bit computers, uh, Zork, uh, stuff like that. I think there's Zork uh, 1, 2, and 3 on here. Uh, doesn't look like I'm going to be able to connect. So, okay, I'm not going to waste my time there. I'm just showing you a couple different things that you could do with packet. Um, I think that's everything I had. Oh. No, I already showed you how to set that. Up. Oh, no, there, there, there is one more thing. The UZ7HO, I'm going to give you a link. I already showed you the website. But this link here, which is available um, on the WinLink's uh, software page, will step you through step-by-step -step on how to set up UZ7HO's uh sound modem software with several different uh, sound modem devices, including signal link. So if you're having interest in doing that, this is the document you want. Um, I guess I could put this in chat. That's the document you want if you want to play with packet using a signal link. Um, again, if you don't have, um, like I said, most people have uh, uh, their signal link connected to their HF radio. If, um, if you don't have a cable for your VHF radio, uh, you can, there is packet on HF uh, 14.105 lower sideband is very popular. Um, there are about 80 stations on there uh, on any given day. Uh, 
so that's very popular for node hopping as well as chat uh, on HF. Uh, over on the DEPN website, under resources, there's several links for, uh, for maps uh, to, to find local packet stations. So you can always see what's available in your area. Just click on the, the icon and it'll tell you the station and uh, their frequency. Well, some, some will say their frequency. And there's um, this one. Again, these links are on my website under resources. That information is old for me. That's that's my old call sign and an old frequency. So I have to update that. Okay, I believe that's everything I had. Is there, there's, uh, Apparently there was a lot of chat. I missed all the chats. Uh, anybody have any questions? Okay, Barry, you want to pick up the chat load and give us a, a rundown? Just lots and lots and lots of good comments. Uh, as far as your Zork, it was eaten by a group, Brian. That's why you couldn't bring it up. I'm trying to see if there's anything. Uh, they recommend different things. Uh, it, the one software does fx25 uh, let's see it's easier to configure and that's basically it lots of good good comments yeah a lot about direwolf um i've had good luck with direwolf uh but i don't promote it for starting out in my presentations um because UZ7HO seems to be more popular. So to keep things as simple as possible, that's what I promote. But Direwolf is very popular. And it does work on a Mac. Okay. I assumed it would. I just don't have any experience with that. And there's links on the Direwolf on the DEPN website as well. Anybody else questions? It's nice to see that this is still alive. Yeah, it's coming together. Um, when I started, I think it was around 2015, I got back in the packet and there was nothing here. Um, I played with Winlink for a little bit. There were two Winlink stations. And uh, I every time I do a presentation, either a Zoom presentation or uh, at a ham fest or even talk about it on the radio oh. there seems to be a new station that pops up the frequency okay yeah one four fourteen dot one oh five lower sideband um there's also a uh one on 40 meters and 10 meters i don't know those frequencies though okay can you lower your uh your desktop if you're done with it Perfect. This is John W6JMK. Uh, do you have any experience with FX25? That's X25 with forward error correction. Um, I do not personally. Um, I know that I, I should have added that thing in there, um, FX25. Uh, also, the Nino TNC does forward error, error correction as well. Uh, they have their own... Uh, uh, version of that but i i do need to add that i i i've had that brought up before and i keep forgetting to add that do you know anybody who uses it i do not personally know dire dire wolf supports fx 25 
Okay. UZ, UZ7HO does not. Correct. And if you go on the UZ7HO's website, it shows you everything that they support. And again, the only reason I promote that is because it seems to be the most popular <laughs> and the easiest to set up and configure. Barry, there's still a couple of questions in the chat. Okay, I'm trying to find them. You go all the way up. You share the URL to the node maps. Uh, and all the links are in the chats. I missed some because I lost my connection. Yeah, there's a comment from Doug and 3LTV about Tarpon. Uh, the North Carolina packet uh, group. Uh, like I said, that's, I actually started with them and try to get that started here in Delaware. Uh, but the groups that I'm, I'm, I'm working with, um, we settled with BPQ um, for different reasons. Uh, and uh, that's where it's been growing for us. But Tarpon is very, very interesting and, and very, very exciting. Tapper is also an interesting site if you want to check it out. Yes. They're a great organization. I have one little question, Wayne, up here in Wisconsin. Um, what's the clincher? What When you do a presentation, what's the one thing that you can grab people to be interested with? I've tried up here and they all look at me like the RCA dog. Yeah, that's that's the problem with this. Um, it, I talk to uh, dozens of people and I might get maybe one or two. Okay, that follow through. Uh, they'll end up on our meetings and they'll ask for help. Um, the Like I said earlier, the biggest the biggest hurdle I have is talking to WinLink users. WinLink users are, they, they don't get it. They, they don't understand what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to say this. There's a, there's a problem with WinLink in, in my area. Okay. They only forward over the internet. And one of the stations, the internet link goes down quite a bit. And those messages sit there for days. And uh, the, another one link station, I've been trying to get him on my backbone. And he goes, I don't need that. I says, and, and what if you lose the internet? He goes, well, when it comes back, those messages will forward. The, so, okay. That's that's what I I I mostly deal with, and I'm trying to show them the advantage of a a backbone, uh, an RF link system that has redundancy, and and it just gives other options. Now the one thing there's one one link station that we're they're putting an HF station up, and hopefully they'll get on HF they'll set up HF forwarding for that for their one links uh, forwarding. Um, but right now they're not utilizing the backbone that we put in place here in North Delaware. Years I, ago, there was a six meter backbone that ran across Wisconsin and good band for that because it's easy cover. Yep. And with a UHF set of backups here and there that would work. And I've always wanted to get it back together, but, um, you, you can't get more than one or two people <laughs> in the state interested at one time. Well, uh, six meters has come up a couple times in our meetings. Okay, so, and I always look at the uh, Alinko uh, DR06s, which I I use the DR mobiles. Uh, I have nine of them uh, for different things uh, running packet, and they're great radios. Uh, so six meters, I might end up with a six meter link somewhere. Uh, we've been talking about it in on the EastNet Packet Network uh, group, as well as other uh, other uh, discussions we've been having. Um, but yeah, uh, 
uh, getting people involved is, uh, well, that's why I'm here. Basically, there's, you know, to let everybody know that packet's still here, uh, the advantages of packet, what it could be used for, um, and just try to get some, some interest there. Whether you build your own uh, system in your area or join ours or whatever, and then the bigger the system, as the system grows, that can connect to other systems. Uh, so that's always a plus. But like I said earlier, uh, back in 2017, when DEPN first formed, uh, the Delaware Packet uh, Group formed, we were, our objective was a statewide uh, linked, RF linked system. And we just went the other way we're all over the place now and even though we grew in north delaware it's hard to get into central delaware uh and southern delaware um there's a couple stations down there but not like we haven't seen the growth that we've seen up here in north delaware wanted to throw out another uh, uh kudos for the dra interfaces too there uh, by we actually use a little bit different version of it, but it's more or less a DRA30 as our audio interfaces on all of our repeaters here, our FM repeaters, um, running all star on everything. Yeah, so DRA, uh, they they work great. And I don't have a problem with the DRA, the DRA45, other than, you know, um, I don't think you need the op amps for modern transceivers. I okay. Let's uh let's pick up uh some people who's got their hands raised here, rather than people just jumping in. Tom, go ahead and take it. Thank you, sir. Um, are you at all familiar? Well, first, a question on something you said that I didn't follow. If a wind link station connects to your backbone instead of trying to use the internet, where does it go once it hits your backbone? How does it get to the wind link? No, it's, it's basically it down to the user. It okay. It will basically connect to another RMS server. Uh, basically, how we're how I have the backbone set up is the two wind link stations would be able to connect to each other. Uh, BBQ runs RMS server. Uh, well, can connect RMS server. I should say doesn't run it, but um, that's that's an option as well. Like um, the one uh, one link station that I'm referring to, that could either connect to the other one link station in North Delaware, uh, actually at the same tower site that my backbone is set up at, or it can go over um, our 70 centimeter backbone to another RMS station uh, uh, on BBQ. Love to hear more about that. And my other question is: Have you heard about the Mid Atlantic Internet Protocol Network? The Mid Atlantic what? Internet Protocol Network. No. Um, it's it's up in the five K um, part fifteen, five meg part fifteen uh, frequencies, um, and its purpose is to link things like hospitals and EOCs and places like that, but on frequencies that would continue to allow them to use encryption where it's necessary. And it now stretches from central Pennsylvania to southern uh, Virginia, and then you know, a couple of places beyond, but they're not all on all the time. Uh, the uh, trip down to southern Virginia is reliable from central Pennsylvania. Okay, I, I'm probably familiar with that. I never heard of the Mid Atlantic Internet Protocol. Um, is that what you said? Yes, it, everybody calls it MAPEN because we're all linguistically lazy, but yeah, it's the Mid Atlantic I, Internet Protocol Network. We did, have, we did have a Rat Pack presentation on that uh, a couple of months ago. How uh, Kemper or Al's call sign, but anyway. I think the big selling point for this is it, it, the whole network is KISS. Everybody knows what KISS stands for. It's basically self-configuring once you get it up. All of the nodes talk to each other and get their lists from each other so they know who they can contact. 
And um, it's simple. It really is simple for people to set up and try it. And it's worthwhile trying it. Right. And now, but with the UZ7HO, that does not have node capability, but it is what I because pack the because the UZ seven HO can not only just do regular packet uh and has a personal bulletin board system built in, but it can also do winlink. Yes, who's who yeah, Brian Charles in New York City. Hey Charles and to NLV. Yep. Hey guys, um, the, the basic idea is that the different BBSs and the different terminal software is the user interface into an infrastructure. Okay, now rather than have a an internet infrastructure, we're talking about an RF infrastructure. And what we're doing behind the scenes on the infrastructure, the packet systems, especially using NetROM, is that the intelligence on how to get from point A to point B is in the NetROM routing tables. As long as they're configured correctly, you go onto your local bulletin board system, you bring up the NetROM table and you can see where you can go from there. So as long as the sysops have put it all together properly and they're talking to each other, you as the user, including the RMS stuff that he was talking about, there are RMS systems in the NetROM tables. Most of them end in dash 10. So you can find this stuff, just become part of your local bulletin board system as your user base, and you'll be able to find your way around the network. You know, it's like the old movie. If you build it, they will come. Yes. Okay. That's, that's, yes, that's correct. That's why we need to get more people on. <laughs> Okay, any more questions out there? How's chat doing there, Barry? Does the DRA-50 have the same challenges as the DRA-45? I am not familiar with um, the DRA-50. Um, can, I, can I speak to this? Yes, please. The DRA-50 and the DRA-45 uh, the electronics are identical. The only thing that's different is the DB9 connector on the DRA45 versus a six pin mini DIN connector on the DRA50. I use the DRA50 exclusively. I have not had any of the difficulties that Brian describes, well, I use it. I use it mostly with uh, Kenwood TM two seven one alphas that I have modified to add a six pin mini din, which the two seven one echoes come with, and. Um, uh, I have found it to be uh, uh, very flexible in working with inexpensive uh, Windows computers and allowing me to run the Windows computer audio in mid-range so that I don't have to crank it up, which I had to do with the 1DRA30 I tried. One man's opinion. Okay, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Uh, how are you really using the amplification of those of these up amps? So it so it does sound like you are that you can run them lower than the DRA thirty. Is that correct? Yeah, and um, I I think that those op amps are less noisy than the sound card in uh, the computer. Uh, and uh, you know, it's it's as broad as it is long, Brian. And I I think packet is forgiving enough. Uh, you know, it's ever which way. The other thing I would tell everyone here is I have something called familial essential tremor. It's not Parkinson's disease, but it's a significant tremor. And 
I was I I build my DRA fifties and it takes me about four hours. It'll take you an hour. I have to clamp down everything. I have to get a prop for my hand and the soldering iron and another prop for my other hand and solder. And you won't have to do that. But they're easy kits. And, um, you know, if you like soldering and building stuff, I encourage you to build uh, uh, the DRA uh, kits. Not so much to save the money as to have the fun putting something together and then using something you built. Yeah, actually, the, I do like the DRA uh, units. Like I said, I got the DRA 30. And I got mine about maybe 20% uh, on the potentiometers. And um, the, uh, the my DRA-45, uh, I have a lot lower, but the, it seems that the, you know, it's very, very touchy. Um, but that, again, that's probably related to the radios I'm interfacing with, though. So, and I just recommended the DRA thirty just to save some same save some money. That's that's basically it. The one thing I can tell you is that Kevin Custer, who's the fella who designed them and runs the company, he is a class act fella. Yep. He uh, he is all about customer service, and he is he is high class. Okay, we have any more questions out there? Hands? Anybody got any hands up? I don't see them. How about Barry? How are we doing in chat? We're good. Someone made a comment that he built an RADR 1X kit in about an hour. So it is capable. People are capable of building those. Yeah, it sounds like it's an easy kit, a fun kit to put together. And th those things are all fun. We're good. Okay. In I'm sorry, go ahead, Barry. We're good in the chat, we're up to date. Okay, uh, are there any more questions? Hands up, please. Any more, um, any comments? That's a great presentation, Brian. This is, you've done a really good job. Appreciate okay. it. Well, I, uh... I was a little bit tired tonight. I, I, I'm usually in bed at nine, nine o'clock because I usually get up early. I have to get up early tomorrow morning because I got to travel about 150 miles. Uh, I got to be there early in the, uh, tomorrow morning. So, uh, and I've been up since 2 a.m. So, <laughs> so you sacrificed for this meeting. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> well, this, we, it took a lot to schedule this meeting. Ask Len. Yes. We, we went back and forth for months. <laughs> we did. And by the way, uh, Brian said that um, uh, his group is there, there to help people. Uh, Brian and also Glenn and 3MEL who's on this, um, who's on this call have been, uh, have spent a lot of time with me and uh, hand holding and you know, kind of dragging me, kicking and screaming into the, into the world of packets. So I appreciate it, Brian. Thank you for coming tonight. You're, you're welcome. Everybody's welcome. We had a three. Brian, Brian's been great for me. Brian and, and Glenn have been great to help me get my yes, uh, my note to where it is. It's still on the bench, but I'm getting close to the day it goes to the bar and then gets on the antenna. All right. Good comments. Good comments all the way around. Is there anybody else? We had a 3B, someone from 3B8 land on tonight. It's 3 o'clock in the summer. It's up 3 o'clock. It's past 7 in the morning there, and they had to go to sleep because they had to go to work. So we had a good. That's, that's Mauritius, right? I don't know. I don't know either. Well, I think we'll wrap it up. It's about 14 after in that vicinity. And so unless there's some more questions or comments here, I think we'll just wrap this session up and look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow.